Okay. Okay. So here we go. So we see there's a bunch of you uh, joining us. So welcome. It's great to have you. Uh, it's great to have you here. Hi. Hey guys. Super. Hello. How are you? We're doing fine, and we uh, we welcome everybody who's come to uh, to join our AGM, and uh, thank you for taking the time and. Uh, there will be uh, there'll be time for questions if there's anything that uh, people have questions about. Um, I don't want to waste anyone's time, so I'm going to start uh, by sharing my screen and going through our package. Okay, and can everyone see that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. So I'm going to hand it over to Judy and she's going to do a, a proper welcome. <laughs> I thought yours was quite proper. <laughs> Thank you everyone uh, for joining us. I know AGMs are not on the top of everyone's social or business list. It's one of those things that we do that are what we call necessary evils. And uh, we're so happy to share things about the Sudbury Arts Council with all of you. So it's, uh, we're grateful that you're here. If these were normal times, we would probably be in the lounge at the Sudbury Theatre Centre having this meeting. You would probably have a plate of food in one hand, a beverage in the other. You would be moving around the room and talking to other artists and really sharing what you do and enjoying yourself. This is a far cry from that, but maybe next year we will all be doing that. Uh, thank you, especially tonight to Linda Carche, who has been the leading us into this meeting. It's not easy to get all of these things prepared. Uh, it's much easier in person. So thank you, Linda, for preparing everything, for getting everything organized. We much appreciate it. And I turn it over to you. Okay, great. Uh, thanks very much, Judy. So we're, we're going to go through the agenda. And, um, and I'll ask for approval of that. Um, Basically, we're, we're going to have an introduction of the board members. We're going to have a review of last year's minutes. Um, Manick will give us a financial report. Uh, we're going to appoint our auditors. Uh, John McHenry is going to do the wonderful highlights of the year. Um, we'll open up if there's any other business. And Catherine is going to uh, look at announcements that she's aware of. And we're going to ask for anybody who's uh, on uh, the meeting with us to also um, provide us with what they know that's going on so we can share and, and uh, enjoy that kind of stuff. So I'll ask for, um, for approval of the agenda. Approved. Okay, who are you? I'm uh, Monique. Okay, thanks Monique. And uh, seconder? I'll second. Thanks John. Everyone in favor? Okay, great, thank you. So I'm gonna scroll down here. And this was our minutes from last year. Um, we had a uh, same old sort of things and uh, we, uh, we introduced our board members, which we'll do in a little bit of time. Uh, we reviewed the previous minutes and uh, we had the financial report by uh, Manick and you know, approved by Vicki and seconded by John. We had a year in review from John McHenry. So you can see that uh, our year was pretty busy in 2018, a little busier in some ways than this year, but nevertheless. And uh, we, we were, as, as Judy mentioned, when we're live, you could do some more exciting things. So we had a video history that uh, Megan put forward. Um, it was uh, 45 years of history. So that was pretty nice. And then other business, uh, Vicki had brought up uh, trying to pitch uh, being able to do fundraising through the Kinsman Home. And then we had announcements from all different people, as we will tonight, uh, about what was going on. And then, then we adjourned. And uh, again, as last year, we were lucky enough to be in person. Uh, Stefan uh, entertained us with uh, his uh, music on uh, the piano and uh, John, 
uh, was our host treating us to uh, goodies there. So we'll all keep our fingers crossed that next year we can do that. And so I'll ask for uh, approval. Oh, first of all, has anybody got any um, amendments or adjustments that they think should happen from last year's minutes? Okay, I don't hear anybody. So I will ask for approval of the um, minutes from October 2018. I approve, Manek. Manek, okay, and seconder? John Lindsay? Okay, great, thanks. All in favor? Okay, carried, great. Oh, and I think then, yeah. So I'm gonna introduce you uh, to the board. Uh, not everybody was able to be here today, but um, uh, I'm Linda Carche, the president. Uh, Judy Strong, who welcomed you, is vice president. Manik Go, who you will uh, see in a few, or hear in a few minutes, uh, is our treasurer. Uh, Vicki Gilhulu, who uh, is not here right now, is our secretary. And then we have um, John McHenry, who will do the highlights. Uh, Catherine Smith, who you all know from jazz and, uh, and many other things in the community. And um, Kyle Vine, who is also not here. And so then I think uh, that rounds us out, right? Did I forget anybody? Dieter. Oh, sorry, yes, Dieter Boosie, who is celebrating his 59th wedding anniversary today, so he could not be with us. Um, so we, we certainly hope that uh, they're having a really good time. And then uh, the little voice that we heard was uh, Megan Karchi, who is our uh, staff and, uh, and uh, does all kinds of things to help everybody uh, work uh, effectively. So then I'm going to turn it over to Manik. So these are our financial statements year ending uh, March 2020. And I'm just the scroller here. Okay, I'm going to pinch to see there and then we should be okay. I know I use my cell phone, so this is like the worst. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're looking at our, re our revenues to begin with. Uh, this is income statement uh, from, I want, is it my God? January, February, March, April, April first uh, to uh, March thirty first of this year, uh, April first of last year. Sorry, uh, to March thirty first of this year. Uh, we're looking at our revenue. Uh, we had total ticket sales uh, 2100. 2, uh, we're looking at our fundraising. We got fifty one hundred uh, through our fundraising uh, uh, provincial arts grants. We're, we've gotten 16,500, uh, corporate donations 7,500, uh, passport revenues we did 21,750, uh, total revenues we're looking at 5,500, or 55, sorry, thousand, um, my god I can't read, uh, $942, uh, then we're looking at our expenses, uh, for our expenses we're looking again, you could, you could see it all in front of you, I'll let you guys read the numbers. Uh, total expenses were $24,828, uh, including our pay, uh, with our payroll, we got $38,434. Uh, uh, total payroll expense, we're looking at 38, sorry, I'm reading, uh, 38,602, uh, which brings our total expenses to 63,431. Uh, our net income was negative seven. Thousand four hundred and is it ninety nine? Eighty nine. There you go. Uh, so we've got that. Yeah. Oh, is that it? Sorry. No. Nope. No. Nope. Then yeah. we get our balance sheet. Four. <laughs> um, okay. So when we get a look at our assets, our current assets right now um, in the account twenty eight thousand five hundred. Uh, so we're actually looking at yeah, there twenty eight thousand six hundred. Um, Liabilities again, numbers are all in front of you. Uh, we've got our retained earnings, equity, current earnings, uh, our equity 36,000, whatever, and some. Uh, less our equity, our total retained earnings are 28,608. Uh, sorry, yeah, I think we're good there, there, right? Yeah, yeah. okay. So you can uh, you can call so, for the motion then. They're make, making a motion to accept the uh. Financial report as presented. Oh, 
Okay, John. And seconder? I'll second, it's Catherine. Okay, thanks Catherine. Before we close, did anybody have any questions? The only thing I found really interesting for me was under passports, when it says they yeah, but that the expenses passport, are 17 and the revenue is 21. It just they, seems well, what happens is that we pay out the majority of it to the various groups that were involved and just keep back a little bit for like our portion. So it worked out like everybody's getting about a thousand and something dollars that participated in the passports. So essentially you're the bank for Sudbury Arts Council is yeah. the bank for the entire project. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we, we yeah, exactly. We market it, we, uh, we um, collect the money and then we distribute it. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so uh, I will ask for if, any, if everyone's approving. Okay, so we're passed. So um, I'll go through the presence report. I won't linger on it a whole long time because um, uh, I will send this package to everybody who was on and anybody else who's interested, of course. Um, so we all know we've had a really uh, bizarre year and we started off in 2019 pretty excited and with lots of energy and then realized that, whoops, um, COVID's come in and, and changed the world. And so, um, you know, we regrouped and, uh, and I think we've uh, worked hard to try to make the best of a bad situation, uh, which meant online, just as we're experiencing tonight, uh, that uh, we have to do things differently. And we started off by uh, doing the first stay at home concert and the artists that performed got paid. And uh, we know that from that, there were other concerts that flourished afterwards. So that was pretty exciting. I think probably our biggest highlight of the year was the celebration of the arts. Um, certainly, uh, it was great to be able to distribute monies to artists who are um, having a rough time with uh, trying to find work at, at, under these circumstances. So that was great. Uh, we were pretty excited to be part of Downtown Jazzed Up with um, the BIA and Jazz Sudbury. And that was, again, something both the celebration and the downtown jazzed up were live. So it was it was really great in these times to do anything that was live. And so again, we had uh, musicians uh, outside and uh, we had visual artists outside on patios. So art got created, everybody got paid. And uh, we we tried to encourage people, you know, to go downtown and, and frequent the businesses. Uh, the Blueberry Festival we also partnered with so that we could uh, help them do something virtual. And so it was a, it was a contest. There was a lot of interest. And um, so it was, it was very uh, neat experience. And it was from all disciplines of the arts. Um, uh, not everybody was an artist that participated, of course. There were a lot of children and, and other people. Uh, but I think it worked out really well. Everybody got uh, awards and plaques, and that was pretty cool. And um, we started the arts after nine, or arts at nine, sorry. Uh, and I'll let uh, John talk about that because he's uh, intimately involved with it. And so he can give you all the, the scoop. Uh, but we have been featuring artists, including a number of BIPOC artists, which is uh, certainly something we're hoping to continue. We've um, established some other places to exhibit art, so two, uh, two spas in the city, both the Renaissance and All About Massage are uh, providing their premises for artists to exhibit and, and sell their work. And um, we've taken over the art crawl from the collective that was uh, handling it. Um, and um, it, it launches this week and it goes through to December. So everybody watch for promotion and enjoy that. And the last but certainly not least is our, uh, our project that's, uh, that's just launched and will uh, officially start in January is the Artrepreneur. So in that we've partnered with uh, York Arts Council, uh, the City of Sudbury, the Regional Business Council and Laurentian University. So this program will be there for uh, candidates that um, are artists or, or budding artists, emerging artists, and they will, um, they will be able to 
put their application in. Uh, we They will be juried to see who are the best candidates uh, if we have too many. And, uh, and then there will be a nine week program that will start in January. They will uh, learn how to run a business. There'll be everything from the financials to uh, HR, to marketing, uh, grant writing, the whole uh, enchilada, and they will write a business plan. There will be an exhibition when we can do live again, there will be an exhibition where all of these people participate and are able to uh, um, brush shoulders with businesses and uh, show that they can learn something to promote themselves. So we're pretty excited about that. And that brings us to, oh, whoops, I might've missed something. Oh no, yes. So um, I'm putting motion forward to appoint our auditors for um, the 2021 year. Uh, to be Sostrich, Ross, Wright, and Security. So I uh, would ask uh, that to be approved by someone. I'll approve it, but you have to say it again. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm requesting the appointment of, uh, of the financial- I'm joking. Audit. I was oh. joking, Linda. It's just the name. It's hilarious. I was okay. making a joke. Okay. <laughs> I obviously didn't catch on. Sorry about that. Uh, and a seconder. I'll second Terry Williams. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Okay, thank you, passed. Uh, so then I'm going to let John McHenry drum roll and tell people what our top highlights of the year were. I'll do it one like this, John, so that you can, uh, <laughs> you can make it exciting. <laughs> okay, thank you, Linda. In no particular order, Number one, our stay-at-home Sudbury virtual variety show. This virtual concert aired on April the 6th and brought together an eclectic mix of 13 local musicians and three comedians over Zoom to perform and raise money while COVID-19 closures were in full effect. A GoFundMe page to support the artists ran during the show, amassing $600 in donations to help artists who were unable to work live gigs during the pandemic. Number two, the Blueberry Festival Contest. In partnership with the Sudbury Blueberry Festival, Sudbury Arts Council helped hold an arts contest called Blue is Beautiful in lieu of the regular outdoor summer festival. Sudbury citizens, as well as national, national entrants of age groups, of all age groups, submitted art pieces uh, by visually crafty, literary, video, musical, etc., showcasing blueberries at the forefront of their art. The contest ran all summer with prizes being awarded in early October. Number three. Whoops, sorry, I'm not as fast as you. The Downtown Sudbury Art Crawl. Sudbury Arts Council assumed leadership of the popular downtown arts and culture event in March and has since delivered one COVID-19 adapted event throughout the month of July, where art pieces from 45 artists were displayed at 40 downtown locations and auctioned off online. Another event is currently underway until December the 13th. You can visit sudryartcrawl.com to see the list of participating venues, check out the art throughout our downtown core, and bid on your favorite pieces online from December the 4th to the 11th. Number four is the new exhibition spaces. Sudbury Arts Council has partnered with La Renaissance Day Spa and All About Massage Spa to offer new exhibition spaces for monthly exhibits of local artists' work. Number five, Entrepreneur. Launched on November the 9th, Entrepreneur is an accelerator program that equips independent artists, arts administrators, and creative entrepreneurs with vital business skills such as marketing, finance, goal setting, strategic planning, and partnership information, which are all needed for success in building a career in the arts industry. Man, I wish this was available when I was going into the business. <laughs> right? The oh nine-week 
online program is comprised of seminars, workshops, assignments, and mentorships. Sudbury Arts Council is able to bring this program to Northern Ontario for the first time with the support of the York Region Arts Council, Ontario Arts Council, City of Greater Sudbury, and the Regional Business Centre. Number six is Downtown Jazzed Up. In partnership with Jazz Festival Sudbury and the Downtown Sudbury BIA, Downtown Jazzed Up brought live music and visual artists to downtown spaces and restaurants to create art on Saturdays throughout September and early October. Number seven is Arts at Nine. Sudbury, Yay. Yay. Sudbury Arts Council partnered with Sudbury Theatre Centre's new radio program, Arts at Nine, which is broadcast on CKLU 96.7, followed up by a broadcast on Eastlink Community TV, and it's also available on all podcast platforms. Every week, Judy Strawn and I talk about local arts happenings, interview local guests from all arts disciplines, and play music by local musicians. And number eight, the Sudbury Celebration of the Arts. Sudbury Arts Council, no, sorry, the sixth annual Sudbury Celebration of the Arts, formerly the Mayor's Celebration of the Arts, honored nine deserving local artists on September the 30th at a socially distanced STC. Typically, one winner is chosen in each of three categories, but judges unanimously decided this year that every finest should be chosen as a winner and each received $1,000 to further their efforts in Sudbury's arts and culture sector. Congratulations to Excellence in the Arts Award winners, singer-songwriter Chuck LaBelle, owner of the Sudbury School of Dance, Denise Vitali, and entertainer, entrepreneur, and educator, Pandora Top. Mid-career winners were painter Jay Favart, singer-songwriter Jopo, and opera singer, music instructor, Pamela Teed. And the emerging artists were singer-songwriter Jennifer Holub, visual artist Gillian Schultz, and playwright Sarah Gartshaw. A new award in memory of artist Ost Sorchuk was presented to Stefan Gauthier, president of the Place des Arts Board. The award goes to, a, to an administrator, educator, or patron who has made a significant contribution to the city. Stefan was presented with an original Sorchuk painting. And that's the highlights of this COVID year. Oh, thanks so much, John. And I will be sending everybody that's on the call uh, this, and you can, you can actually just click on the YouTube and you can actually see a video of the evening if you weren't able to be there because we were, um, we were not able to have tickets like we normally do for everybody. So you can, you can have a sneak peek at what it was really like. Okay, um, so the next thing we have is other business. And I'm just gonna go back up to my agenda so you don't have to look at things that you don't want to. Um, and does anybody have any other business they wanted to bring forward? I do. Yes, Judy. Oh, I just want to add the video that you're referring to, is that um, a short video that John took? What, what are you yeah, referring to? Yeah, it's the short video John took. Okay, if you wanna see the entire hour, which was really well done by Eastlink, if you have Eastlink or have, it's archived on demand. So just go and find it anytime for the next five years on demand, the whole hour show. It's great. Great. Thanks for letting us know that. Okay. Any I have, other? Yeah. Can I have you? something. Um, it's just uh, I uh, quickly about uh, political advocacy. I had a conversation with Jamie West yesterday uh, because through my work with Jazz, I learned about some 
um, surreptitious funding cuts to the arts that the Ontario government was trying to pull off uh, in the form of, um, you know, not allowing organizations to be eligible for two different granting streams that we had previously been eligible for, or we're eligible, but we can't accept both. So we used to be able to get money from Ontario Creates and from Celebrate Ontario, and they've, they've just changed the rules. And so uh, it makes me wonder if that's happening um, in other um, uh art forms? Is it happening in theater? Is it, am I just specifically personally dealing with music right now and the kinds of grants that a music festival applies for? But if anybody else has any um, specific information regarding provincial funding right now and how it is impacting their organization, uh, I'd be interested in hearing about it because Jamie and I are going to continue this conversation. So um, you could probably find me on Facebook or um, I could put my email in the message uh, in case anyone has any information they'd like to share. Thank you. Catherine, definitely put that on Facebook because I will share it on okay. uh, on my Facebook and it'll go into the art sector. Excellent. Because uh, we definitely want to know about uh, uh, stuff like that. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of time before this government started to do that. So. It's happening. If it's happening in this little way for the music stream, then it's happening in other little ways for everyone else. And Jamie's very interested in this conversation. So I, I'm just trying to, yeah, that's great. I'll do that. Thank you, Demetra. Have you seen what's available through the Northern Ontario Recovery Fund? Yeah. Okay. Just because I, I realized that opened that up to uh, so many different avenues as well that I've even been able to apply. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know if they've replaced one with another, but I'm happy to have at least this one. <laughs> I don't know how it will work for next year, but regardless. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, that's good. Perhaps. Lisa, can I provide an update from uh, Cafe Heritage? Yes, oh, please. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of things that I'd like to, uh, to point out. First of all, sorry for being late. I was on a Zoom call with Killarney. Our 200th anniversary uh, celebration, as you know, was postponed because of COVID. So we're trying to land on um, redoing it for July of, two, of 2021. So uh, sorry for the for being late. Um, it's okay. But with, with the case of um, Cafe Heritage, we have created uh, an incredible platform to go virtual productions. We've created a company called Cafe Upfront Productions, media productions team, professional photographers, videographers, webcasters. So we have this uh, company ready to work with uh, any of the organizations in Greater Sudbury. So we, we, we reach out to anybody that would like to, uh, uh, to go virtually. Um, what we did, if you'd like to see some of the products, we created 14 one-hour uh, concerts, the Heart to Home series with local local musicians uh, that was aired in, uh, in in June. And then we created 12 one-hour concerts, the summer concerts where we did them on the sponsor sites. So you can go to individual sponsor sites and again, promoting local musicians. Uh, we also uh, worked with UN NATO Canada uh, to do a Remembrance Day um, celebration. And that in fact brings the arts in with the pipers and and the buglers and uh, different art forms. And that, that got 3,400 hits across the country and it's really growing very strong. And um, so you can go on to www.cafeheritage.ca and you'll be able to see these productions and get a feel for uh, the professionalism. We're very, very proud of uh, what's happening. But what's coming up on November the 28th, we just spent the weekend at the Northbury and we completed the Lions Superstars vocal competition where we, uh, we basically took uh, winners from last year's competition, 12 and under and 13 to 19 and created a production. And ultimately that will be aired on the 28th of November at seven o'clock and basically a prelude to, to promoting the Lions Telethon because they're gonna be really challenged this year. And they're going from 36 lines, phone lines down to 12 a four hour production. Uh, so I think they're really gonna be challenged and uh, we're hoping that uh, our particular production with the superstars is gonna help promote uh, a project that you might be familiar with, a few of you, Judith for sure, uh, John for sure, is the uh, Destination Tamarack, uh, which is a, um, a product that we're looking at 20, 2022, which is a 90 minute stage production 
telling the Canadian story that brings the cultural industries of Sudbury together. Where we're at right now is uh, the board of directors, Kathy Hedetash, is investing $5,650 into the project. Uh, we have gone past phase one with the city of Greater Sudbury. Uh, they're going to, uh, they're looking at, I'm just working with them right now for phase two to approve $14,125. Once we have that, we're going to Fednor to make an application for the balance of 30, 37,000. So it'll be a $56,000 study to determine whether it's feasible to uh, replicate the program that's out of Saigony called the Fabuliers Wayam. Uh, so it's, uh, it's moving along quite well. Um, it'll take probably um, six to 12 months to complete that study to determine whether we have the resources to build, uh, create and implement this project because it could be anywhere from a one to a $2 million build and approximately a 750 to a, to a million dollar to operate per year. And what it would be would be 20, 20 um, a production, 20 concerts over the period of, uh, of the summer months in Sudbury. Uh, that's it in a nutshell for us. Um, we're busy doing that. And uh, we got our fingers crossed on the Destination Tamarack program at this point. Cool. Very exciting. Um, what I can do is I can submit uh, to you, uh, Linda, is an overview of, of some of the stuff that we're doing. And you can share with your membership if you'd sure. like. OK, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, so then if, if, I don't know if there's any other business. Otherwise, I'll turn it over to Catherine to uh, talk about announcements and ask all of you to give us your announcements. Um, OK. Um, I'll talk about what I know and I'll, I'll ask if I think the people involved are here, I'll ask them to add some information and then I'll just ask at the end that anyone that uh, whose uh, project I didn't mention, we, we talk about that as well. So what I know is coming up. Uh, yes, theater and the Sudbury Theater Center, of course, have bed and breakfast opening. Um, and that is the November 27th to December 13th. Um, those tickets are for sale through the Sudbury Theatre Centre's box office, if I'm not mistaken. And um, the playwright is Mark Crawford, and it's hilarious, and you should definitely check it out because that would be Alessandro and Jake, and I very much look forward to it. Um, Alessandro, are you still here? Do you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, it's going to be really great. We're really excited. Awesome. Yeah. I can't wait. I'm very stoked. I'm excited to see live theatre, and I'm excited to see something that I know will make me laugh. Um, um, I'm going to leave that one to last. Um, the Place Melter Virtual Festival is happening November 19th to 21st, which is pretty exciting that that's happening online. Um, the Sudbury Indie Cinema is uh, open and offering regular screenings, which is great, and also offering opportunities for other arts organizations to use their space. So uh, Jazz Sudbury has a fundraiser on December 3rd. We're screening Born to be Blue, which of course was filmed here, and uh, we'll have a little live music to go along with that and hope to have everyone come out and support. And then, uh, yes, theatre has a cabaret on December 5th at the Indie Cinema. Um, Sudbury Arts Council is doing a bunch of things we've talked about, so I won't go into detail, but of course the Entrepreneur Program is open, the Art Crawl, um, and we will definitely be continuing the Downtown Jazzed Up uh, initiative into next summer. It was a wonderful initiative and we look forward to being able to expand it, start it earlier um, when it's not so cold, and also are really interested in figuring out how to incorporate other art forms into the project. So if you know anybody has any ideas about how to tap into other uh, art forms uh, that would complement the project, we'd definitely like to hear about that. Um, and the last thing I wanted to mention, which isn't art specifically, but it's definitely cultural, and I think could be a really, really wonderful opportunity for any arts organizations for some recognition is that the 
Um, Greater Sudbury Public Library is doing this Santa Claus parade initiative where you basically, um, they're creating a video uh, instead because we can't have a live Santa Claus parade. So they're creating a video and you can go on YouTube and see the instructions of what to do. And they basically want you to create a float and then make a video of you dragging the float off from off screen, across the screen, and then off screen. And they're going to put them all together and they're going to make a giant video of this. So I think you know, yes, theater should have a float, like, you know, get together, drink some wine and make a float. I know Jazz Sudbury is definitely going to do it. Um, and I would encourage, you know, they're letting everyone do it. So it could be like a three hour video of cardboard floats. I don't know, but uh, it's free. And uh, I think it's pretty neat. So I would encourage you all to take advantage. Um, who else has uh, arts events coming up that, oh, Judy, do you want to tell us about the extension of the amazing case of the missing A.Y. Jackson and how we can all watch that? if we didn't catch it uh, at the theater? Uh, originally, the case of the missing A.Y. Jacksons, for those of you who maybe aren't old enough to know this story or aren't from Sudbury, is an actual 1974 theft of two A.Y. Jacksons in the same night. Uh, it occurred, as I say, 46 years ago, and the case has yet to be solved. So we have done um, a play that was supposed to be just at the Sudbury Theatre Centre stage, but we videoed it last weekend and we are streaming it. It's being edited right now and we are streaming it on December 4, 5, 6, 7. So four days of streaming. You can see it anytime, 24 hours a day. You can watch it at three in the morning. It has 15 Sudburyans in the cast and some certainly some great actors and some very recognizable uh, people in our community. Um, let's see, Crime Stoppers are aboard because they will take tips from all across Canada, the United States and the world. Somebody knows something. Know that. Somebody knows something. They just didn't poof into air. We're going to solve this thing. So please watch this show. You will be amazed that this is a Sudbury story. Amazed. There's even a murder involved in it and it's all true. You can get your tickets by, by going to cklu.ca. That's your doorway into our theater. We are so grateful to Cinefest Sudbury who is handling all the technical problems and will uh, they practice all September on their own festival just so that they could handle ours with kid gloves. So I feel confident that you'll have no problem watching it. Thank you. The ticket is only $16. So you can pack your room with everybody in your bubble and watch it for $16. I know you won't do that. And if you do, I know you'll make a huge donation to CKLU. Thank you. <laughs> Great, Judy. Excellent. Thank you, Judy, for putting the rest of us to shame. <laughs> turned into an instant commercial right there you pulled that up on your screen didn't you like lickety split wait i gotta get a ad out um <laughs> i'd like to add to that if i can judy yeah <laughs> not quite as eloquently but whatever um uh, the painting that was on stage uh is also up for auction um as a fundraising effort for the stc or for sorry uh, for CKLU. Um, and so if uh, it will be part of the art crawl and it will be on display uh, for the entire month and you'll be able to bid on that one art piece uh, from December 6th to the 13th. Excellent. And who painted it? Oh, of course I did. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I, I think it rivals one of his, but whatever, that's just my, my opinion. Yeah, you can have your own A.Y. Jackson done by Maniplego. <laughs> Hopefully. Thank you very to, much. I just wanted to say, speaking of paintings, that in the Finance Committee meeting at City Hall last night, uh, Monique's uh, mural was featured. Oh. Uh, you know, the, the, the mural that's on that takes place at the underpass, and uh, it was on the screen for quite some time, and the councillors seemed quite impressed by it. Uh, I just wanted to say, as chair of the Sudbury Blueberry Festival, I'm happy that we were able to partner with the Sudbury Arts Council and to run the Blue is Beautiful contest. And all the entries can be seen at uh, on our Blueberry Festival website, which is very simply blueberryfestival.ca. 
And also, I just had one question with respect to Gary when he was talking about the very ambitious uh, endeavor that they're planning for the future. There's a lot of talk about the expense, but uh, Gary, if you're still there, is there going to be uh, revenue generated uh, as well by these uh, by these events that are going to be taking place? That's one of the um, prerequisites with the study is to determine revenue streams. Uh, we've been playing with um, uh, basically uh, funding funders, uh, looking at Canadian Heritage, uh, Terry Arts Council, uh, developing a sponsorship campaign, uh, looking at a variety of fundraising events. Um, the, the, the project that we're landing on from the Saguenay has been running for 32 consecutive years with the exception of COVID. They've had over 1 million participants. Uh, that's selling out. Their theater that they took over holds 2,250 uh, seats. And that when I saw it back in 2011, there was like 40, 40 uh, buses, passenger buses sitting in the yard. It's an incredible production. And again, um, I have the link to that if anybody would like to see the video clips from it. Um, so basically uh, there's a lot of unknown questions, uh, John, and that's the reason for the feasibility study is to, um, uh, Judy was part of a game that we played called the thousand questions and we came up with a thousand and one. And uh, so that's why the firm will be answering a lot of these questions as to location, uh, basically, um, you know, the uh, everything about this, this entire script. Uh, it's a multimedia. It's um, It's got to be the likes of Cavalia. It's got to be the likes. It's got to be something incredible to be able to draw people to to the city to make it another destination event for, for Greater Sudbury. Does that answer your question, John, at all? Or... Yeah, this is, yeah, yeah, thank you very much. I was hoping you'd bring back Elvis too, but. <laughs> well, maybe that <laughs> might be part of, uh, might be part of the, uh, the, good, the good 60s, John. Yeah. Uh, Dimitra, do you want to tell us what's going on at the uh, art gallery? Um, sure, thanks a lot. Um, we have our current exhibitions up until December 24th, although it's likely they're going to be extended till January 3rd. We have the Franklin Carmichael preview in galleries one and two. There are 37 works by a group of seven artists, Franklin Carmichael, who uh, resided in um, uh, the Lacloche area in the district of Sudbury. Um, 33 of them are the promised gift that is the seed of the new uh, Franklin Carmichael Art Gallery of Sudbury that is now slated to open as part of Junction East in 2023-2024. Super exciting uh, with our partners of the STC, um, the Sud Greater Sudbury Public Library and the Sudbury Multicultural Folk Arts Association. Um, upstairs, uh, we also have a, the world's biggest show and the world's tiniest gallery. And that is 34 artworks by uh, 30 artists in the community. It's, an ex it's a second iteration of Elizabeth Holmes project uh, that she did for her gallery, North Forte, called, the, and this iteration is called The Long Thin Show Continued. Um, so we've been open since August 5th doing uh, pre-booked uh, visits. Um, the visits are pay what you can or admission by donation. So there's no uh, uh, economic barrier there. And we've been completely booked um, uh, really for the next two weeks. We, we don't have one spot available, but uh, you can book online through the Art Gallery of Sudbury by going to uh, the website, artsudbury.org, and it's a Calendly function and uh, you can, can fit yourself in. And then coming up in January, due to COVID, we had another exhibition based on our collections that is going to be, it's called Inuit Prints uh, from the Collections, um, 1959 to 1970. And uh, unfortunately, we've had to put that forward to next summer because we can't get our curator, our Inuit curator, to come in residence in Sudbury during COVID. So we're going to, and instead, we're bringing in um, an exhibition from the um, West Baffin um, Island Cooperative called Kanojuak Ashivik Life and Legacy. It's going to be a beautiful exhibition of 37 original drawings by. Uh, Anyone, anyway, master artist uh, Kanojo Akashivik. So 
we're hoping that people will um, come out to see that and that'll be opening possibly the third week in January. Uh, and then after that, we are planning to do our um, juried Sudbury Secondary School Art Show Emergence, which had to be canceled last year, uh, but we will be providing it as an exhibition and that that will be April 9th to May the 9th. Um, so, uh, and I'm, I'm just gonna snatch a minute here and first say, you guys, the Sudbury Arts Council has done incredible work this year. And I, I, there's no point in the agenda to really give yourselves a big hand of applause, but downtown jazzed up, the downtown art crawl, um, entrepreneur, um, arts at nine, these are all fantastic, fantastic initiatives. And your financial statements don't reflect the uh, incredible work that you have managed to do in the last year. It's totally spectacular. And I really, I really uh, want to give you a big hand of applause. I haven't voted on anything because I'm actually not sure. Did we get our invoice? Have we paid our invoice for this year? So I just want to put it on the record there that I didn't vote because I don't know if I'm a member yet, <laughs> if I'm a mo member for this year. But um, from, from the outside, if I'm not a member, we want to be a member, of course. Um, just a big round of applause because uh, just spectacular. And so it's so much fun and so inspiring to hear you guys provide your reports to around the table. So, and in conclusion, in the Carmichael exhibition, it turned out that the blue that's on the wall is blueberry blue. So there you go, John. <laughs> that's excellent. <laughs> that was really great. Thank you for saying that, Demetri. I think we all very much appreciated that and probably really needed to hear it. So. Yeah, yes. Yes. Um, and Monique's crying. So <laughs> um, does anybody else want to tell us about what they are working on? Uh, Terry. Uh, thanks. Um, hi, everyone. I'm really glad to be here uh, in a personal capacity as, as an independent artist. But I am also happen to be the secretary of the board for the Sudbury Symphony. Uh, and I would be remiss if I did not mention our upcoming fundraising event, uh, the Symphony Snowfall Gala on Saturday, December 12th at 8 p.m. Uh, it's being hosted at Indie Cinema uh, and it's gonna be a night of entertainment, refreshment and music from the SSO String Quartet as well as Carly Schofield on flute. Uh, and of course, uh, Monique Legault uh, will be, uh, I understand, creating a painting uh, as the evening progresses, which will be given away to one lucky uh, guest. Uh, it is a gala event and the tickets are $150. Uh, and it is limited to 40 tickets. Uh, we will be publishing uh, this to Facebook and other uh, channels, I think tomorrow. So you'll probably see it come across your feeds. So hopefully we'll see some faces there. So, and uh, uh, thank you also to the, for, um, for my own part, to the Sudbury Arts Council, having moved here in January of 2019, it's been a, a great um, opportunity to get to connect with uh, people and understand what's going on in the community. So thank you from me. Awesome, thank you, Terry, I appreciate that. Um, does anybody else have anything to add? Catherine, I have one other, um, yeah. I forgot one event. Yeah. Uh, we're partnering with um, Parkside um, Senior Centers Without Walls every Thursday night at seven o'clock. We have a guest uh, artist, musician uh, from uh, Greater Sudbury that's on for an hour and it's basically an opportunity for those present. You have to pre-register with uh, Natalie Labe from um, Parkside, uh, but it's an interaction with the artist, um, you know, and, and those who are on Zoom. We're calling it Baby Zoomers. And ultimately, so you have a chance to talk to the artist, how they got involved, their type of music, why they selected it. And uh, we're quite honored to have Andy Lowe coming on this Thursday night. Last Thursday was uh, Duncan Cameron, and of course Duncan is you know one of our infamous uh, singers, uh, musicians in Greater Sudbury. But uh, you know Andy's going to bring another another real nice folk twist to Thursday night. So for the next, uh, it's going to be 19 Thursday nights right till the end of March. We have an artist coming in uh, to perform, and the interaction is what we're looking for. Uh, you know, to try and get sort of the feeling for the art, the feeling for the musician, and how they got started, you know, the kind of kind of things that uh, that surrounds music. Um, 
So I'm sorry I forgot about that, but uh, I think it's a, it's a good opportunity again. Excellent. And if you have artists that you think would like to be part of uh, of our production series, uh, kindly send them to me. Uh, you know, we'd like to work with them. We don't charge a fee or anything. Uh, we're not a, we're not an agency. We're just trying to promote local performers in the greater Sudbury area. So again, that's Baby Zoomers every, every Thursday night at seven o'clock, pre-register through uh, Parkside uh, with uh, Natalie Labbe, L-A-B-B-E-E. -E. Thank you. Excellent, thank you, Gary. I just, uh, Kathy, uh, yeah. I just wonder if I could mention, today I took part in a, an interesting I don't know exactly what you want to call it. It was a conversation, I think, that has been described. It's uh, sponsored by the United Way. And what they're going out doing is talking to various segments of the community about what possibly the United Way can do to foster more community cohesion, if you want to put it that way. And uh, it's, we all, of course, realize the United Way it, it, you know, you know, generally sponsors a social type of uh, uh, endeavors. Uh, but also they're, they're trying to broaden their, their mandate to a certain extent. And today what we had was representatives from some of the seniors organizations, some of those uh, from the, the park side, uh, uh, from CARP, the Canadian Association of Retired Persons, some other interested persons in the community. And, uh, and, and I believe Richard Denton, who was on this uh, uh, call tonight, was, was also there. I'm not sure if Richard's still with us, but it was very interesting. And I think that... Uh, United Way may be interested in doing something similar with those in the arts community. If those uh, who are on this call tonight might be interested, I can contact Linda and see if she's interested in, in entertaining that sort of endeavor where you have the opportunity. And I can send out the, uh, uh, the actual uh, platform, if you will, that, uh, that uh, which they're looking at in order to get uh, feelings from the community uh, not just due to, to COVID, but, uh, you know, to, going broader than that to, to see what actually uh, can be done if, uh, and I can sort of quote from the, uh, 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 from the manifesto, if you will, is that, you know, to make Sudbury a more livable place. And uh, the arts, as you know, are extremely important economically and in so many other ways. And I was looking at a report today from Kansas City, which, uh, Re practically reinvented itself uh, through the arts. And I think there's many examples uh, around the world where, where that's happened. And I think that's where the United Way is, is sort of looking at it. So if you wish, I can, uh, I can work with Linda and, and put forth some of, uh, some of the material from the United Way and those in the arts community might be interested. It's basically an hour long conversation through Zoom uh, with a maximum of about eight individuals. So everybody has a chance to uh, present their their feelings uh, and uh, opinions, and uh, uh, I'll do that fairly uh, fairly soon if anyone's interested. And John, John, we're yeah. super interested in that, and I'm uh, I'm going to say we've tried to get uh, in into partnership with the United Way for the last six years, and they keep saying to us that the issue is that uh, we can't demonstrate the kind of measurable impacts or the kind of change that you can make in one individual's life through an exchange with the arts. So in a sense, um, you know, we haven't been eligible um, in, a, you know, we're a charitable organization. They haven't received our application, even working in more social agency areas um, uh, for funding. So we're super interested in that. Um, and as a result, uh, we haven't, it's, it's one of the only kinds, of, the only form of real corporate giving you can access in Sudbury. Um, and we, we've had uh, lots of ideas about how we could match them, but the measurement on their end, it's really their capacity to recognize the change that you can make in one person's life. Um, and so I'm very interested in seeing ways or other scales or other forms of measurement that other United Ways are able to use with respect to keeping uh, the arts involved. So thank you very much for me, uh, and I'd be very interested in that. Uh, Alessandra, I'm so sorry, I think I cut you off. That's okay. That's okay. I just, uh, John, my question was, are they interested in like providing financial support to organizations in that sort of regard? Or is it about just some type of other 
support. I, uh, I, uh, I, think at, I think at the present time, it's sort of an exploratory exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, they're sort of opening up. I mean, I was you know, one of the founding members of the United Way many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was pretty specific at that time. But I, I think that there is a, the, the United Way is being supplied with, uh, with additional funding uh, from upper levels uh, of government, and I, I, I guess they're looking at ways in which they can expand uh, their activities. Of course, there's a lot of concern right now with respect to uh, the homeless and housing, uh, food, you know, the, the, the two basic necessities is shelter and food. And of course, the United Way is, is more or less concentrating on the, some of those areas. Uh, it's, it's interesting how this how Zoom works. You can actually see just how bad you look and my glasses definitely need to be aligned. But uh, since I had my cataract operation, I don't need them. So anyway, so I, I, I think it's, it's sort of up in the air, Alexander. I, I'm not exactly sure, you know, where they're headed. I think they just want to get a feeling from the community that there's other sectors that perhaps uh, they, they, they haven't been involved with uh, before. And uh, you have a lot to say, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so nothing ventured, nothing gained, I, I guess. Yeah. Great. Sure. Thank you. And uh, Terry has a question or, or a comment. Oh no, that was just uh, I had my hand up for a uh, to mention the fundraiser. So oh. I was sure if we were using that feature or just speaking out. So okay, okay, Demetra. Yeah, just to follow up, I want to say that um, artist poverty is poverty, and um, that we need to be um, not a, a afraid to say that there are people in the arts community that are suffering to the same degree that every other person is suffering, particularly during COVID. And there is some um, misconception that artists are there to be drawn upon just as givers, but they, sh they aren't eligible uh, to receive um, social benefit. And honestly, I've seen so many visual artists and writers in desperate straits, uh, to the point of suicide actually in the last, uh, in the last six months, because the the performance venues, the commissioning venues have all shut down for six months. So there's a ton of um, reason to support the arts community through the United Way or uh, in, in social, include artists in social giving in the same way as others who are struggling um, should do. So if there's a case to be built there. Uh, we would love to be part of that as well. We'll, we'll definitely follow up on that. So I don't know if everybody's uh, done their announcements. Is that true? Okay. Uh, if they if they have, um, I I definitely wanted to uh, uh, thank you for uh, your kind words. Uh, it's it's great to know that uh, the hard work that we do um, is noticed and that we are making a difference. So so thank you very much. Um, thank you all also for attending and um, I'm going to call for adjournment and um, we'll